back. So this is lesson 37, am I right? Yes, ma'am. So getting back to the last two questions that we didn't have time for yesterday, you had to go and find out what the product is, and the product must be negative. negative. That means always, whatever graph they are, the one has to be at the top and the one at the bottom to get to a negative, because a plus times a minus gives a minus. You realize that that is y, the y value. So that means at the top or at the bottom, and that's also the y. That's why we say, how do we get them plus and minus? One y is at the top, one y is at the bottom, and it doesn't matter which one. So let's get the answer. So where the one graph is at the top of the x-axis and the one is at the bottom. Starting here, when my graph started at x equal to zero, they were both at the bottom. It's so small you can barely see it. But in that little space from zero to 11,54, which was that x-intercept we calculated yesterday, from 11,4, then the orange one is at the top, while the yellow one is at the bottom. bottom. But for that little spacey there, they're both at the bottom. bottom. So where's the one at the top and where the other one at the bottom? From 11.54 up to 90. 90. So that's what we write. From 11, 11.54 up to 90. 90. Include x Include. Usually you let yourself be led by that. And in this case, you would be right, would you? Yes. Okay, because the 11.54 doesn't have any asymptotes and the 90 also doesn't have a problem. Because at 90, the one value is 0, times the other value of 1 will be 0 and can also be 0. Yes, yes it's negative or exactly 0. So both of them are included. So if you just guessed it and put the equal sign there, you were right. Or does it happen again? That the one is at the top and the one is at the bottom. Yes. From 90, they are both at the top. Up to where? This one stays at the top until 180. While this one, after 168,4, which is the other one we figured out yesterday, where they are equal to each other. I erased that here. They were equal to each other at 11,54 and 168,4. We did speak about that yesterday, right? So from 168, the orange one, that small little piece is at the bottom, while the yellow one, far, far away in the galaxy, far beyond this, is still positive. So for that little piece there between 168 and 180, obviously no, I wrote it wrong, I haven't written it yet, 168, comma, 46, up to 1. 80, including both? Yes. No, because the 180 yes. is an asymptote. So immediately <coughs> the graph doesn't even exist. You can't take that into account. Then after the 180, they are both negative. negative. Up to where? Yes. To 70. Then the one is at the top and the one is at the bottom, bottom again. So from 270 up to? <coughs> 360 and including both? No. No, again with the 360 being out because it's an asymptote for one of them. The last question is the easiest one. Where is G, our yellow graph, our tan graph, under the line? So where would the x value be negative? Of the y value be negative? From 90 from? Zero up to 90. Zero up to 90, including, excluding. You let yourself by led by that. You just say excluding, and are you right? Yes. If it had been included, you could have included 90, but not zero still, because there's an asymptote. The other piece where the yellow one is at the bottom is from 180 up to 270. Include, exclude? Well, this says exclude anyway. And don't forget, in between two answers, or. Oh. Right. <coughs> okay, this is going to be the pattern of working with functions when we get to parabolas and hyperbolas as well. When you have sketched it yourself, that's one part of it. But then you can get a question where I give you the sketch and I ask you to get me the equation. 
All right, that's going to happen in all the parabolas, high turbulence, exponentials, straight lines, all of them. And also then with your um, synecosmetan graphs, your trigonometric graphs. But very important, if it's synecos, which one is which? Well, I've written it in color and everything here, but they have to indicate to you which one of this purple and this red one is the sin graph and which one is the cos graph. They both could have been sin. They both, both could have been cos. They could have been swapped around. Why? Because the sin graph and the cos graph shape, if you extend it a little bit and move it on top of each other to 90 to the left or right, they're going to sit exactly on the same space. So I have to tell you, this, this purple one is a cos graph. That red one is the sin graph. I have to. And then you can't decide, well, I don't like it, I want to change it. That's how it is. Now I'm indicating to you that you've got to go find A. That tells you something happened to the X, the girls. And this one says something happened to the girls as well. This is you either timed or divided by a number. And that's what would give you your A value in reverse. This says you moved it to the left or right and your B value in reverse. Because it's a girl, both of them. Okay, so you still need to know, and I'm not going to sketch it now. You still need to know, let's start with the cos graph. The purple one is the cos graph. The purple one should start at? One. Zero and one. Yes. Still the same? But the next one should have been at? 90 and 0. Where is it? 180 and 0. What happened to that x value? It was multiplied by 2. So what must be the equation? Cos 2. X over 2. What did you do with the point that used to be that 90? It was multiplied by 2. But did we say multiply by 2? Yeah. <coughs> Fx should have been? Oh, half of it. And there's variations in writing that, right? Mm -hmm. Half, x, all like that. So do you agree, if I want to know what the value of a is, it's better to write it this way. Because now I can see, aha, uh -huh. but a is? But it's still the jolly girls. Other way around. So when I ask you to go sketch this, you should know it was time with a half, so you must divide with a half or time by. So are you with me here? A divide by two is the same as times with a half. I'm saying that very wrong now. That times with a half is the same as dividing by two. Okay, but that, did you see how I got it? Still knowing my point by point. Now do that on a calculator. Because I know some of you like to do the calculator. You couldn't do that on a calculator. You had to know it was the number graph. And it also worked to this side because it used to be at minus 90. If it continued, it's minus 180. So definitely the x was times with 2. But in the formula, it must show it times with a half. So that the a value is a half. Nice and easy. Two marks. Either you got it or you didn't. <coughs> then we go to the g graph, the sin graph. They told me it was sin. So otherwise, if it was cos, then this should have been over here, right? If it was cos. So it would have moved more, much more. But they're telling me this sin. I've got to figure out how much. And I haven't indicated that on this. I forgot. Now you can see how much. This has to be a sin graph. Where does the sin graph stop? Zero. At zero. Where is it now? At 20. So it moved. 30 to the right. right. It's physically moved to the right. But then what must be my equation? It's minus 30. It's all the same principle. If it says minus 30, then what are you going to do? You're going to move it to the right. It's the answer. First write the equation, then answer my question. Therefore, B must be? I hear two answers, and I want to know why the one is not right. Is it 30 or negative 30? Negative 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Why? Because the equation I gave you said minus B. So it's minus 
30 and the V is 30. If the sum had said plus, the answer would still be x minus 30, that can't change. But then your B value would have been negative 30. Be careful for that in all of your equations, including parabolas, etc. This is going to happen. That you must go look what they gave you and apply the answer. It's easy, isn't it? Okay, just applications. Let's look at another one. Solson and Cos. If it's tan, it's actually easier because you can't do anything else than tan, right? But still, I have to show you that there's variations. This could have been a movement up, down, left, right, whatever, two of them, and then you can't just see it. They have to tell you, listen, it was sin and something plus, let's call it Q, they like to use Q. Then you know it has to have moved left and up or right and down or whatever the case may be. But you go back to your original graphs. First of all, this question just said, find me the period of F. Now it feels wayward. I would also go first and get the equation. They're going to ask me for that. Yes, they did. They've got a variable there by the A. And they've got a variable there, B, in the cos graph. Again, they told me which one is which, otherwise they very well could have been the same. They could have both been cos, both been sin, or the other way around. No matter. So if I want the period of F, can I see it on the graph without knowing the equation? Yes. What's the period of F? 720. 720, look at it. The purple graph. Goes from 360 down, up, up, down. Boom. It's complete before it starts a new cycle. The same pattern. But that doesn't even look like a sin graph. It doesn't matter. The sin graph actually starts here and goes down and up again. But can you see that it's 720? So what happened to these girls? They were multiplied by 2 to get from 360 that you know to 720. So what's this A? A half of that's without doing the technique I showed you there. Let's do the technique I showed you there. Let's go for the sin graph, the purple graph, and see. Okay, well, sin starts at zero, it's still at zero. The next one should have been at 90, but it's now at 1. And so what happened to this graph? It was multiplied by 2. Then this must be divided by 2, or in other words, half. But basically it comes down to then A is equal to a off. Are you with me? Variations in thinking if you want. Did it happen for every single one of them? It should have been 0, then 90 and, zero, and 1, then 180. From 180, it's at 0 now, it's at 360. What happened? X was timed with 2. So it should have been half, because then X is timed with 2. Remember the backwards thing. Alright, that's why they ask it. It's the more difficult one. It's always the backwards thing. Let's have a look at cars then. The cos graph, they never asked me for the cos graph's um, domain of the range. That's not what I wanted to say. The period. What is the period of the cos graph? You have to look very carefully. Because they didn't give me this. I must check it out. But they did give me. It's cute. They did give me 45. It's not even written there, but can you see it? Because it's 90, and this would be 225. They can um, type it out there on your page, the 225. They didn't type it out there. But if you look at all the graphs, I'm saying there. No, I can't see. You can't see. But you can see it there. And you can see it there. So what happened to this cos graph? It used to be there at 1. Now it's at? Negative 45 to the left. This had to be 90. 45 to the left. The next one should have been there. 45 to the left. So after checking out a few times, it's 45 to the left. What should have been the equation? Plus. X plus 45. Because it goes left, then the equation must be plus. Getting your brain around this. And then what is the answer then for B? It's 45 as is. There's the equation. I'm asking for B. What happened to B? B is 45. 
But if I ask you for the transformation, what happened to the gas cars drop if we 45 to the yeah. left? But in the equation, you write plus. And if I ask you for this answer, you'll say 45. What if they said minus? But this is still 45. Then V should have been? Minus, minus 45. So that it's minus 45 times a minus giving me a plus. That would be a more funky question. You agree? But it was straightforward. And it said plus, and the answer is just 45. Last question on this, because now we need to go and look at a little bit of these transformations <coughs> taking place. Now they said find the range of H. No, what's going on here? Find the range of these two ones at the moment. What is the range of the red one? Range. Range of the y values. Domain of the x values. X values here was only sketched from. Minus 362 plus 360, that would have been the domain. The range for both of these graphs are negative y is between negative 1 and 1, in including both of them. But then they come with strange things, because now they're talking about h, and I say, ma'am, wait. There's a mistake here on the question paper, because we're working with g and f. Where's h? Now they're telling you there's h. h is when you take. G, and tell me in plain English what am I doing with it? Subtract one from all the y's. So what's the graph doing? Moving one down. So if you take G, which was the original red graph, and you move it one with down with one unit, what's going to be the range? Instead of one to negative one. Negative 2, eh? Excellent! Two marks for you. Are you with me? But it's all about knowing that this says there's a transformation taking place on G, and then that new graph that would have been down by one unit will now be only between negative 2 and 0. Two marks. Okay, tricky. Got to read very carefully. Okay. Alright, so we're getting into the nitty gritty of trig. Now in trig, once you know all the stuff, the first thing you always are going to look for in a trig um, paper is this first answer that I'm doing. Cos, Pythagoras, Butterfly, something. Hang on there, it's just my wording. Nobody else sees it. Okay. When the sun starts off and I say, if sin theta is 3 over 5, and tan theta is less than zero, meaning negative. negative. Very important. Find me cos without a calculator. Very important. Because there are alternative ways. Can I find theta then? Mm -hmm. Using shift sin, right? Yes. And once I've got the angle, just place it in there and say cos of the angle, and you've got your answer. But that's not this technique. So if the sum usually says without a calculator, and very often they say, and use a diagram, or they even give you a diagram sometimes, then all the, all the notes are there, all the indications are there that you've got to do this sum. Now you did do this in grade 10, but very basic. We usually just gave it to you on a, on a Cartesian plane. So first of all, you have to go and remember that sin, cos, and 10 are... Which signs over which signs? How did you remember that? Yeah. I don't care how you remember that. My kids know it as orange apple, orange apple, ha ha. I don't care. <laughs> Some old kids cackle and howl in an old age or something like that. I don't remember. But I don't care as long as you know that if I ask for cause that it is. Adjacent over high. That's important. Then also important is that you from now on will always remember that sin is positive in which of the um, quadrants? First and second. First and second, how come? That's what this is all about. All of them are positive in the first quadrant. First quadrant from 0 to 90. 
But this is now very different from what we've just been doing. We've just been doing singles like this, isn't it? From 0 to 90. Completely a different method or a different way of showing it. Are you with me? And then from 90 to 180 and then to 180 to 270 and 360 back again. I am now measuring it as if it's in a revolution. Remember when we started we said angles are always, if you measure them, from standard position x-axis. So 30 degrees would be somewhere over there, 100 degrees somewhere over there, 200 degrees somewhere over there, and 300 degrees somewhere over there. Are you with me? So that's where we're heading now. But can I show it there? Yes, you can. But for knowing where these um, functions or trigonometric ratios are positive and negative, Basically, it comes down to the graphs. Look at it. Where's the first um, quadrant? There's the first quadrant. And the y is? Positive. And the second quadrant? The y is? Positive. First quadrant up to 90. Second quadrant, the y values are? Positive. Third quadrant, do you see what I'm trying to show you? There's quadrant one, two, three, and four. And quadrant three, the y values are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, negative, meaning where is some positive? First and second. That's what this means, sin is positive. And cos. Quadrant one, positive. positive. Two, negative. Three, negative. Four, positive. Do you see it? So where is cos positive? First and fourth. Do you see it? Four chain. <laughs> right. I'm not going to draw everything now. But that's the first quadrant, right? And tan is positive. That's the second quadrant, right? Please don't think that that's an asymptote now. That's not what I'm trying to show you. One, two, three. Are you with me? So for the first quadrant, tan is positive. For the second, it's negative. For the third, it's positive. For the fourth, it's negative. So you see this happening. That's where we get to this. So tan is positive in the first and the third. But the other two, negative. So what does this C-A-S-T mean? that you must know, in this quadrant, cos is positive, but sin and tan is negative. Because we don't write them all down here. We just write T, A, S, T, and you must know. Tan is positive, but sin and cos negative. Sin is positive, but cos and tan are you with me, guys. So now, sin was not given positive, but you can read it's positive. So I'm saying sin is positive, and tan is negative. So where is sin positive as well as tan negative? Quadrant two. And guys, you can't make your own names for them. This is quadrant one, two, three, four. Like I showed you where it comes from. That was zero to ninety to one eighty to two seventy and back to three sixty again. Are you with me? Yeah. So sin is positive and tan is also negative. Where? Only in the second quadrant. That's what this little sketch is about. Because you're going to use one of the butterflies' wings in the second quadrant. In other words, it will have to be that little piece. Never ever, never ever butterfly. Are you with me? It's just a technique to help you remember. So when I get here, my angle, that's what these little dots are for, will always be there. And this angle's name is theta. Now it's not quite correct, but you still get to, need, need to get to the reduction formulas. You're going to take all of your um, degrees, like 100 degrees and 200 degrees, and you are going to reduce them with reduction formulas to an acute angle. It's a process. But all I'm trying to say here is that this angle will then be your reduced angle to an a, to a acute angle. Right, actually, that's your angle over there. But you're always going to put it over here. For now, it doesn't make all the sense because we haven't done the reduction formulas yet. So it's a lot of stuff going to be happening in the next few 
weeks, all right? So this will always be 90, meaning this is always going to be the which side? Orange, apple, ha ha, whatever, right? This is going to be my opposite side. This is going to be my adjacent, and this will be my hypotenuse. What has been given to you? Sin is opposite and hypotenuse. Guys, if you don't know that sin is opposite of hypotenuse, so why? So, sin is opposite is 3, so this one is 3. Hypotenuse is 5. So what's this one? Oh. Oh. Can you buy how? It's the golden triangle. It's not always going to be that case, but if it's 3, 4, 5, fantastic. Right. So my x, and you're not right, x is not 4. Oh, it's negative 4. Because look at the place on the Cartesian plane. Funky, funky, funky all the time. Are you with me? So then x will be negative 4. If it wasn't the golden triangle, you would have had to work it out. Hypotenuse side squared minus the other side, whatever, whatever. And please always give Pythagoras his credit. Now I've just got to answer my question, please. The question was, find what? Cos theta. So what's cos theta? Yeah. And our sum is done. Yeah. It'll be about four or five marks for an metric exam. It's about did you get the correct quadrant? Yes. Did you do the Pythagoras? Yes. And did you get to your answer? Maybe two, maybe one more. Alright, so first of all, you've got to do the butterfly to find out in which quadrant it is. Then you've got to find out two sides to be able to use. Pythagoras. There has to be two sides. In some sort of way, I've got to give it to you. Have the two sides and use Pythagoras. And how do you get to the correct quadrant? With your cost. You know where cost comes from now. For always and forever. Alright. And there's your answer. Okay.